Want to have the best build when it comes to magic and using a katana and becoming a deadly magician and samurai at the same time? Well, boy, do I have a build for you guys that's going to be super versatile and it's going to make your life very easy. Today, I'm going to show you guys whether you're level 50, level 100, or level 150 plus, how this build will carry you from early game all the way to end game, NG plus, and up. And you guys will be happy to know you don't need to farm too much to get this build set up because almost everything that I'm going to showcase in the game, I'm going to showcase to show you guys, you can pick up early games. All right, so let me showcase you the ability of this beautiful build, guys. It is just so versatile, which is why I love it, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So as you guys see here, I'm going to show you guys exactly what all these do, but let me show you guys the cool, awesome thing ability about this. So if we have a long distance enemy, we're able to do that to a very nice cast. So we have a bit of amount of... FP consumption, but not a problem. If an enemy like this decides to get close, we can always switch up to a different casting spell. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the one that the uh, Glintstone Pebble, which only costs 10 FP. But the cool thing about this one, look at the amount of damage it does if we multicast this, right? We're almost hitting 2000K with four casts. Now, what makes this even better is if an enemy gets really close and I wanna use my weapon, I'm more than easily able to use my weapon without a problem because my weapon allows me to use the magic and scale off the magic that I currently have. So let's say we guys, we want to engage this guy and he's really close. He wants to come in here. We're going to be able to do this real quick and take him out really fast without a problem. And we're not going to be able to take too much epic consumption. As you guys see right here, you're getting pretty crazy. Let's just avoid those swings right here. I'm going to try to get up to him right here. And as you guys see right there, really fast and we're able to take him out without a problem. So what makes this build so awesome is the fact that we're able to engage different multiple enemies, whether it be up close, mid range or long range, allowing us to use all our magic spells as fast as we possibly can. Now, let me showcase what the build also does when you're fighting multiple enemies so you guys can get a bit idea if you guys are fighting just regular trash mobs. All right, so now if you guys are fighting regular trash mobs, guys, of course, you're gonna use the most easiest thing you could possibly do, which is the Glintstone Pebble. Look at that, look at that, guys. Three, three shots, I would say four shots to take them out, right? If, if you get consistent, and you see the FP consumption, the beauty about this build is that every time I kill someone, that FP consumption will come back at to me without a problem. So not only am I using the FP, but I'm also able to get it back without a problem. Now, if I wanted to get even crazier, I could just use this, take them out really easily with just one swing. So that's what makes this build really awesome. And not only does it allow you to kill multiple enemies very fast and very quickly, but it also allows you to kill enemies really fast. Now let me showcase you a couple of the spells, not all of them, but entirely, but let me showcase you a couple of spells that are gonna make your life really easier. And I will show you guys towards the end of the video what those spells are and why I decided to pick these up so you guys can get a better idea. But this is just a multi-casting one if there's multiple enemies. So let's say I wanna take this guy out, right? So we take this guy out, but there's these guys that are coming here. We'll just select this one, and then we'll just cast this one out of way. And as you guys see, it hits multiple of them at the same time, which makes it really awesome because I'm able to get multiple kills at once. Now, they decide to get close. We're able to do that, or we're able to do that, and they are officially dead, allowing me to get my FP back as quickly as we possibly can and also my endurance. So now that you understand how the build works and why you, now you understand why this is the best build out there, Let's talk about the gear, what we picked and what we went to, and also give you guys the breakdown if you're level 50, level 100, and level 150, where you want to spend your points. So, of course, the first thing we're gonna be using is the weapon in general. We're gonna be using the Moon Veil. It's extremely important that you understand that the Moon Veil is pretty much a katana that is basically a magic weapon. It's a weapon that scales off intelligence, which makes it a magic or mage weapon. And it's awesome because it also scales off dexterity. In addition to that, it has an amazing passive effect that a lot of people really don't talk about that, but it does allow you to cause blood loss buildup, which when you cause blood buildup, it allows you to get a little bit more damage. Now in our offhand guys, we are using the Meteorite Staff. Now Meteorite Staff, the reason I went with this one and I didn't pick another one is because if you're level 50, if you're level 100, this is definitely the best staff you could use at that early stage of the game. Even in the 150 range, this will still carry you through the 150. Now, once you get past that 150, 120 range, you're probably gonna wanna change this up to something a little bit more powerful. Like for example, the Karen and Regal Spectre, which is the one I would recommend you go off with. 
or you can go something with the Asura, but this is definitely the one I would pr personally recommend once you're able to pick this weapon. But from now on, just one with the mirror and staff, you guys should be good. The reason why this is so awesome is because it has a passive effect that it boosts gra uh, gravity sorcery, which we're theoretically not using that much, but it does have an S tier into intelligence, which makes it extremely powerful. Now, as far as our gear is concerned, guys, I am running this one, and this is basically the gear you want to get because this gear is going to make you have a little bit more punch when you're using your sorcery spells. And that is the Twin Sag Glintstone Crown. The advantage of this one is that it's going to boost your intelligence by a total of six points. As you guys see right here, our intelligence goes up. If I have it off, right, our intelligence dips to 70, but our intelligence goes up to 76. Even though we are going to be losing a little bit of stamina, and we are going to be losing a little bit HP. As you guys see, we lose like about 4 points. And we lose about 10 points into stamina. It doesn't really matter because we are getting that uh, intelligence. And once we go into the cold stats, I'll explain where the soft cap and the hard cap is there. So you guys can get a better idea of what we're trying to do with this build. Now, in addition to that, we're also running the Spellblade uh, Traveling. Um, traveling. These are really good because what these actually do is that it strengthens the glintstone sorcery skill. So anytime you're using a glintstone sorcery, it's gonna strengthen that. And the cool thing about that is that this actually scales off with every particular item that you have. So it scales off the uh, the chest piece, the gloves, and of course the boots, which are running all of them at the same time. Now, of course, for our pretty much our sorcery, our talisman that we're running is we're running this one, the Graven Mass Talisman. This is gonna greatly raise your potency of sorceries. So it's gonna allow you to do a little bit more damage. Now, we're running the Radicon Icon. Now, this is going to be a requirement for this build. The reason why this is a requirement for this build is because this allows us to scale very little bit into Dexterity, which we're running 50 in Dexterity, but by running this particular Icon, it gives us a total of 20 extra additional Dexterity, allowing us to hit that hard cap to get the maximum amount of Dexterity that we possibly can. And the reason Dexterity is so important is because our weapon, remember what our weapon scales off, it scales off with dexterity and it scales off intelligence, allowing that moon veil to do a ton of damage when running this build. So it's preventing your primary weapon is gonna be, of course, the moon veil, but your secondary weapon is gonna allow you to fight people from far distance, which is your staff, and also when people get close or do that long range combat damage, allowing you to do a ton of damage. Next thing we're running, guys, is the Shard of Alexander. This is going to greatly boost your attack power skills. Now, every single thing that I'm mentioning here in the video, I have guides here on the channel of where to pick these up. I'll link them down below in the annotations so you guys can know exactly where to go. If for some reason it's not linked, let me know in the comment section down below and we'll put this together for you guys. So, the last thing we're running, guys, is the Ancestral Spirit Horn. Now, this is going to restore the FP consumption anytime you defeat an enemy. So this allows us to get that FP consumption back so we can use more casting spells as quickly as we possibly can. So now that you know the gear, now that you know everything, and of course I will show you guys where to get the weapon, where to get the staff at the end of the video. I also have videos showcasing where they're at, but I do want to make sure I have to show you guys where the primary weapons are in case you are new to the game. Now if you guys are finding this helpful and informative, I thank you would be greatly appreciated. Hit that little heart button Hit us with a thanks, we greatly appreciate it. Now, now that we understand that, let's go ahead and talk about the stats. All right, so here we are in the attribute points, guys. And the reason why I want to point this out is I am currently running an astrologer. If you're running a different class, your base numbers are going to look a little bit different. But I'm going to give you guys the overall idea of where you want to be and where you want to spend your 50 points at. So first thing you want to do, guys, your priority number one when you're building this build because you want to make sure you get your intelligence as high as you possibly can because that's going to give you that raw damage that you need. So we're going to be dumping and investing 25 points here. And then we're going to go, sorry, we're going to go up here. We're going to go to the dexterity and we're going to cap this at 20. Now this is assuming you already have the moon veil and you already have the staff, which you could get early in the game without doing anything or killing any boss. You could easily go and pick these up without a problem. So those are your two main things that you want to make sure. You want to make sure you have your intelligence, you want to make sure you have your, your in dexterity. Now, another thing that's going to be extremely important, of course, is your vigor because you want to make sure you're surviving. So what we're going to do with the vigor is we're going to set it up at 20 as well. So we're having 20 in vigor, 20 in dexterity, 25 in intelligence. Then we're going to come here and do go move into strength, and we're going to push this all the way to 14, and we should be good to go. We're going to keep that at 15, sorry. And now we still have some points to mess around with. 
So this is where I'm going to leave it in your personal perspective because I gave you kind of like the raw idea. You have a total of 11 points to dump into anywhere you want. Me personally, I would definitely dump those into intelligence, those 11 points, because I want to make sure I'm hitting that soft cap as fast as I can. The soft cap on this one is 40, so we spent our 50 points in here. As you guys see right here, we're going to get up to 36 in intelligence, so that's how I would play it. But for you guys, if you want to make sure you want to, if you want to spend those in dexterity, or you want to put those in mind, or a little bit more vigor, vigor, I'm gonna leave that to your personal preference. All right, guys. So now, if you are level 100, this is what your stats you want to reflect. So for vigor, you want to be at 30. Theoretically, you could get this down to 25 and maybe spend get intelligence all the way to 60. But I don't want you to guys be super squishy. I want you guys to be able to survive. So you're gonna to want to make sure you set your vigor to 30. You want to make sure your mind's at 20 so you can cast enough. You want to make sure your endurance is at 15, your strength's at 15, and you want to make sure your dexterity, guys, is set to 30, allowing you to do faster casting speeds and also your intelligence. The faster you're able to scale this up, the fat more damage you're going to be doing with that. So that's going to be for level 100. And of course, for level 150, you're going to make sure you cast this at 70. You want to make sure you get this to 50 right here because remember, we are using that talisman that's going to boost it up to 70. And then you want to make sure you get your mind to 30 just so you get more casting speed. And you want to set this to 35 so you would, won't be super squishy. And that is the numbers you want to have for your attribute points if you are a level 150. Now, if you're a higher level than 150, of course, you don't have to dump any more points into dexterity because you're already hitting that hard cap. The only thing you need to do is dump 10 more points into intelligence because that's going to get you that hard cap. The hard cap of intelligence is 80. So that's the only thing you need to invest in those additional 10 points if you're like 160. And then you will be pretty good with intelligence dexterity. The next of the points, you're going to want to spend either in vigor if you're dying too much. Or if you want to make sure you're casting more often, you want to spend it in mind. And then endurance and strength kind of just uh, fall off. I would probably do endurance. So main thing here, guys, if you're past 150, spend all your points to intelligence until you get it to 80. You can theoretically just spend more four points because we're using that helmet. It does give us six additional points. With four more points, we'll get to 80. So that gives us a nice cap there. And any other points, you want to make sure you spend into vigor in mind. And of course, some points more into endurance if you're higher level. I'm telling you guys, if you put this build together, you guys are going to have a cakewalk when it comes to any content, whether you're playing early or you're playing late game. Now that you guys know how you put this build together and how you guys go and respect your attributes, let's talk about where you're going to be able to get the meteor staff and also where you're going to get the Moonvale Katana. And if you guys are finding these videos helpful and informative, do make a huge favor, guys, hit us with that like button down below. we definitely like to have you guys' feedback. And if you have any adjustments you'd like to see in the build, also let me know in the comment section down below. Now let's show you guys exactly where to get the weapons. Enjoy the rest of the video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. So what you're going to do first is open up your map, as you see here, um, pointing out, setting up a guide where you need to go. Follow through and you're going to be able to get there. At the same time, I'm playing here the playthrough of where it is located. I'm doing it fast forward so you guys can see where exactly it is. You're able to see where I'm going to. You're also going to find this route that I'm taking you through. You're going to find a lot of different things that you may want to pick up. Trust me. You're going to need them as you continue your playthrough. You're also going to find a map location that you can open up. So you can open up your map and you're able to see more of all the different type of locations that Elden Ring has. You're also going to, I'm also going to take you through two different churches. One of them is going to be the Smolding Church and the other one is going to be the Church of Marika. Now, it's very important here in the Church of Marika as well as the Smolding Church. So you do the grace location so you can have that in your map. You're also going to find in the Church of Marika two things. One, besides the grace, is going to be the sacred tear cup. You want to pick this one up. Especially here in the, in the uh, Church of Marika, you may want to go on the side of the church because if you try to go through the front, you may not survive. So just giving you a tip right there. So as you see, you just continue going along and you're going to find a lot of different things, especially in this route that I'm taking you through. Once we get there, we're getting close to the Gale Tunnel Cave. Once we get there, 
this is where the next challenge appears. You're gonna be, first of all, you're gonna be freezing in this first level a couple of nights, just take care of them. And as you see here, I'm just showing you a clean play playthrough so you can see what exactly you need to do. Here in this location, make sure you guys go where exactly I'm going through. This is like a little challenging puzzle, but you know, it's not that bad, not that bad. So as you go here, just go through down the little uh, puzzle here. So make sure that you don't fall or else um, if you don't have that grace point that you just did earlier, then you're gonna have to go back even further. And here is going to be another great discovery that you just did and then just continue your playthrough. And here you're gonna be facing a couple of more enemies. I already took care of those and just giving you a clean run. So you can see where exactly just, you know, go to your left side and just try to avoid any knights if you can, because those guys are pretty deadly. So as you see here, take care of those bad boys and just keep going to your left. And as you see here, you're gonna be facing two doors. Door in the front is gonna be for another grace period and the uh, door on the right side, that is where you're gonna be finding the next katana, the Moonville katana, in which you need to defeat the magma worm dragon the magma worm dragon and here you're gonna once you defeat him you're gonna be able to get two items one is going to be the dragon heart that is a good pickup and then the last one of course is going to be the moonville katana and here are all the stats so you guys can see as you see here the stats are okay but the good thing is that you're able to upgrade this weapon which you can make it even more powerful 